Well, let me, let me if, if you don't mind, let me just jump back for a second. Kenny Cooper and Taylor Fulman played overseas, and they stunk. Yeah, right? it's true. Uh, Landon Donovan is one of the few guys that also played overseas and bombed out and then came back here, became a little more mature, and then did go over and, and have a successful career. But most Americans, to be frank, mm-hmm. have gone over there and failed. Uh, I agree. To, you know, so, I mean, we, we need to take that into consideration. And, and even guys that we've sent over there, Josie Altador is, is frankly a failure at this point. Uh, Quinn Dempsey yeah. is probably our best field player. Okay, mm-hmm. um, Let's keep that in mind. The, the idea that MLS, uh, and, and this is one of the things I've, I've really had a problem with, the league seems to want to command top dollar for guys who play very well in MLS, who are Americans, mm-hmm. but doesn't seem to want to pay any money for guys who have proved themselves uh, who are not Americans who don't have a giant commercial name. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, that's completely wrong-headed. Uh, I would have sent Landon Donovan overseas to Everton and, and gone as a, you know, as a pay-as-you-play day, you know, play, a pay-as-you-play deal, and said, you know, if this kid, you know, goes over here and, you know, scores a certain number of goals, you got to give us a ton of money that, you know, the transfer fee over here, we paid him $900,000 this year, you pay his salary, he goes. You know, mm-hmm. straight loan deal. I think MLS is very unrealistic about the money it expects. Yeah, yeah, from its agree. players. Yeah. It is completely overvaluing its guys to the point that other clubs come in, and I think, uh, and I've heard this actually several times from people that represent uh, other clubs internationally in France and Spain and England. You know, they, they've come in with some interest, and they said, you know, we'll, we'll give you a million dollars, we'll give you two million dollars, and we'll give you, you know, a graduated thing. And MLS comes back and says, well, your interest must be that. Well, we want ten million, mm-hmm. which is a completely yeah. unrealistic way to do business. Yeah. And uh, I think that hurts them. Yeah. Now, the second thing I will say is if you get that money in, all right, uh, the best players in this league tend not to be necessarily big names. I mean, mm-hmm. who's been the most valuable player in, in MLS these last two seasons? I would say David Ferrara and, and Guillermo Spiller Schwapo, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, okay, Scalopo could, could go down tomorrow and, and coach a replay to Boca Juniors. And he's been an incredible, you know, value for, for the Columbus crew. And how much is he getting paid, you know? Mm-hmm. W. Ferrara, again, he's yep. probably taken FC Dallas right, you know, right through the playoffs. How much did he get? Right. You know, we, we've had all this money spent on guys like Terry Henry who are not delivering anything at all. And mm-hmm. the only reason they got that money is because they've got a big name. Yeah. Most yeah. American fans only want to see a good product. They don't care what the name on the field is. I think that's right. there's a fundamental misunderstanding about that. Yep. They want to see good football. They don't care who's playing it. They just want to see good football. You could take the money mm-hmm. you gave to Thierry Henry and spread it around another 15 guys. Mm-hmm. You get a pretty good team. And you could take the money that you got from Josie Altador, again, and spread it around another 15 guys. But they haven't done that. And to me, yep. that's that's one of the main sticking points I have with MLS. Well, they, they go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry, but they, you know, I think a lot of it is um, we have this haves and have not system in the MLS. You have players making a lot of money, and then you have these guys making, you know, uh, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy k, and and yeah, that is a problem. But then you have all these people that bring up oh the NASL history fears that if in fact. You know, we do expand and we do increase the salaries and we do allow teams to spend more and more money that we're going to somehow turn the MLS into the NASL and, and it's going to crumble and, and financially go into ruin. I mean, isn't isn't that a, a, a bogus argument? It's a completely bogus argument because most of those people never knew and never experienced what the NASL was. Mm-hmm. And the NASL did not collapse because of... Uh, financial mismanagement. The NASL collapsed because of overexpansion and the fact that they sold a bunch of franchises to people that could not afford to actually run teams. Right. And that's a very different structure than what's going on in MLS. We have a, a central structure where everybody has to pay in a certain amount of money, um, and you have a unified league. I mean, look, uh, I grew up watching the NASL, and, too, yeah. uh, and, and I had family members that were involved in running the NASL. And some of the arguments against the NASL that, that the MLS has put up are absolutely comical to me. They, they, uh, they believe that the NASL was the great Satan as far as American soccer was concerned. Yep. 
whereas they don't realize that the NHL was actually very close to competing with the NFL in terms of attendance, TV ratings, and popularity. Yep. Now, I hate to say this, but if soccer can reach that point in 1979, mm-hmm. why in the hell would you be arguing against that? Yeah. MLS has never even come close to that. They've never even come close to the, the attention that, the, the, you know, I mean, they've never even come close to the attention of Rochester Lancers got. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to me, this is this is just completely bizarre. I mean, yeah. you're you're reacting against something that you believe is true because you've told yourself it's true when it's not, mm-hmm. and and that is, it's one of the most frustrating things about American soccer. Somebody has convinced themselves that because something else failed, that anything they did must be wrong, and therefore any kind of advice or any kind of uh, path that they blazed has to be denigrated and has to be, you know, completely overlooked. Look, most of the people that are making arguments uh, claiming that, oh, the MLS can't spend any money because then they'll collapse, they have no understanding of modern sports. They have no understanding of how television ratings work. They have no understanding of how, you know, uh, salary demands in in modern sports work. And frankly, I, I think they're idiots. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say that right out. Because I love it. Yeah. The, the, you know, the truth is the NASL was actually a successful league to a certain point, and unfortunately uh, they got to a point where they had some owners that were not willing to make a cash call. There was uh, a World Cup that was not awarded, and some people that had been, uh, I think, perhaps were not necessarily sports people, uh, and I will point directly to the New York Cosmos, mm-hmm. um, that came in there that were, were not sports people, uh, did not recognize the fact that a small, in, the, in this period, you know, a small uh, investment of $3 million might have taken them over the hump mm-hmm. uh, and, and made a league that today would be worth billions of dollars. It, right. it was a tremendous miscalculation. Mm-hmm. But the lessons there uh, in the NASL were, were not that, oh, you, you shouldn't spend money, you shouldn't put a, pro- a good product in the field. The lessons were that when you need to inject money into your business, you need to inject money in your business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you've learned completely the wrong lesson. Right. And uh, it, to me, it's, it's, it's baffling. I mean, uh, I have obviously railed against U.S. soccer for years. I've criticized MLS. It is, it's, I'm, I'm continually amazed by the fact that people are so stupid that they cannot understand history and they do not look at it and say, well, you know what, we've learned the the wrong lessons and and we've got to adjust our viewpoint. Instead, they double down on the same idiotic, you know, uh, uh, the same idiotic misreading of things and it's only because of, you know, the fact that they've got an ideology that says, well, we have to do this because we've, we've predicated everything on this. There's no pragmatism in American soccer. There's nobody that's willing to say that, hey, we, we've done something and it's wrong, and uh, we're willing to admit it's wrong, and now we got to try something else. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's oh, shoot, we've we've got to you know keep spilling uh, good money after bad, and even though it's demonstrable that it doesn't work, mm-hmm. because we're reacting against something that happened 30 years ago, yeah. we must be right. Right. To me, that's that's about as dumb as you can get. Right. Brett, did you? But then again, you know, um, uh, I'm 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 obviously the asshole because <laughs> I keep saying that. So you know what? Well, and, don't and, worry about that. <laughs> you know, That's why we I, love you. Um, it's it's baffling to me. It really yeah. is. It's baffling. Well,